Storm Eternal can't be that much more intense than Doom 2016. Like, you can only slay demons so hard. Why do I hear music? Where is this coming from? Doom! Welcome to Doom Eternal, bitch! The game that's everything you want, and more. And more, and more, and we're getting slammed over the head with more. Oh yeah? Well, can your Doom 2016 bonk? Yeah, didn't think so, my man. This is not a sponsored video, first off. Much like the Rage 2 video, Bethesda was like, we'll give you early access if you make one of your dumbass videos, to which my reply was, I me the fuck up! So even though they gave me an awesome signed poster and a neato Doom Slayer action figure, I've received absolutely no money, signed no contract, not even an NDA. We pay for free up in this bitch. I was allowed to play for three hours, record for one hour, and I have distilled everything that I experienced into this one video to feast your eyes or eye on. Oh god, what happened to Mike Wazowski? Number one, playing Doom Eternal put me in a trance. Like, I was so engaged in the action, the world around me ceased to exist, and it took a dev touching me for me to snap out of it. Whoa, hey, take it easy, Badger. That demon had a family. I know. They're next. But beyond the endless violence that you should already expect, the main theme I want you to keep in your head bricks. Doom Eternal is all about building a Doom Slayer from the ground up, which, much like a house, is done brick by brick. Nobody beats the brick! At the beginning of the play session, it was, I hope I get some neato guns so I can win this war. Then by the end of the play session, it was, I am the war! And the story of that transformation is the story of this video. So let's start building the Slayer one brick at a time. The Slayer has arrived. All mortal challenged personnel, please be advised. The combat shotgun is square one, which is beyond self-explanatory to even the newest Doom Slayer. Did you mean my right hand? Once you've blasted away your first few waves, then come the mods, going the direction of either grenade launcher, it's not a grenade launcher, it's a sticky bomb, shut up, or a full auto shoddy, and although you can swap to either on the fly, you can guess which one I prefer. And just like that, all my shells are gone. Which isn't a big deal, by the way, because that's what the chainsaw is for. Welcome to hell, where the demons are just pinatas ready to burst open with bullets. You mean living, breathing ammo box? Crack another shell and nail another headshot, because headshots lead to staggers, and staggers lead to glory kills. Divide by two. No matter if it's a weak spot or a headshot, doing enough damage to a demon will stagger him with blinking blue or orange indicators just begging for a conclusion. I'll take that. Weapons modding those weapons, refilling those weapons, properly using those weapons, are you with me? I'm sure you are. Those bricks? Rock solid. Now that you've modded your guns, let's mod you, starting with Blood Punch. Just two glory kills now lands you a mighty Falcon Punch that disintegrates anything still standing. You see it? And it's gone. But what is strength without swiftness, which is where Double Dash comes in? Whether it's navigating levels, getting into trouble, getting out of trouble, or dodging lava, it's the quickest way to make their here. Get the fuck over there. And alley. Yup. Falcon Punch, Falcon Kick, cool shit. But the real changes come with runes. And to satisfy all you sticklers out there that want every drop of info. <laughs> Faster glory kills, farther glory kills, glory kill speed boost, mid-air jukes, longer staggers become literally too angry to die, slow motion, faster cooldown, blood punch, drops health. Of these nine that I saw on the menu, only three were able to be equipped at once, and I only got far enough to unlock one. Chrono Strike. Hell yeah! I have the power of God! Right clicking while in midair shoves you into a slow motion state, and it could not have come at a better time, because I just picked up a brand new heavy cannon with two baller mods that made for the perfect test. Precision bolts on, one jet gone, two jets gone, Ben Wallace goes up. <laughs> Damn! And the mini missiles? Ooh, baby! Everything is better in slow motion. <laughs> you see what I'm saying now. Weapon mods are cool, suit mods are neat, but runes? That shit pours gasoline onto an already raging fire. No other upgrade comes 
close. Now, slaying enough demons will not only grant you weapon mods, but also weapon points, which you can spend on upgrading mods, like reload time and blast radius on the nade launcher. And upgrading all upgrades lands you mastery, like being able to launch five nades before reloading. Yes, you can upgrade your upgrades with an upgrade, in case the shotgun grenade launcher just wasn't enough. Man, you ever upgrade your upgrades and then you're like, damn, I better upgrade. The last upgrade for me was the third and final weapon tossed into my hands, the plasma rifle, which I wasn't a huge fan of because it felt less visceral than conventional guns and a little too easy mode. But, you know, it had its moments. I am gonna burn this man like a chicken nugget. <laughs> I feel like we're making progress here. Bricks are starting to fall into place. Modding your aggression, modding your movement, mods of time, all the way to mods of mods. You're building the shape of this layer to suit your playstyle. But even more critical than the firepower itself is when and how you use it. Enter the demons. Mike was asking you looking Kako demon? Perfect example. You can spend 15 seconds lobbing random shit at this guy, or you can blast one grenade in his mouth and make sure there's never gonna be a monster zing too. He shoots... He scores, and just like that, we got a 2319. Arachnotrons are scary too, but if you've got the brains to destroy its cannon first to cut off its range, it's only a few stickies away from being not so scary. Get me more pictures of Spider-Man! Revenant, aka Dude Demon, same story. Much like a plane when both of its engines are gone, he's definitely going down. Next crispy and dude, you get it now. Right weapon, right part, right time, recipe for destruction. No matter how big or bad the demon may be. Come on, buddy, you don't have. <laughs> Except for Hell Knights, I have no idea what the fuck to do with those guys apart from spam all the shit you've got and wait until he turns orange. My raffle knife goes. Life. Not all of your obstacles are living and breathing, though. In typical Doom fashion, you're also solving puzzles like punching giant chains into submission and playing the floor as lava. I'm sure if the lava was alive, the Doom Slayer would kill it. And you've got a middle ground between those two, with obstacles that were once living that are now not. But that's nothing a power core and some disemboweling can't fix. Yeah, so then you're gonna go straight through his intestines, hang a right, while power cores let you burst through obstacles, sentinel batteries let you key your way through locks in the hub to access neato areas in your home away from hell. This hub most importantly holds your mission teleporter to continue your genocidal crusade, but it also introduces Praetor suit points that can make you a little tougher, a little faster, a little deadlier, not nearly as dank as runes, still useful though. Also found new abilities in the ship, like the ice bomb that I always forget to use, and above all else, the Ripatorium. Not a lie, not a meme, it is literally a demon prison where you can practice fighting monsters without dying or or losing inventory while blasting BFG division. It's called the Repertorium. You know, I would say this is against the Geneva Convention, but I'm 100% certain Geneva doesn't exist anymore. These bricks really starting to add up. You know the weapons at your disposal, who you'll be using them against, where is best to hit them, navigating the obstacles between them, and where you can hone your demon slaying craft by abusing prisoners. With all these bricks starting to solidify, I finally understood what the creative director Hugo Martin was talking about when he first spoke to us before we even started playing. At the beginning of the playtest, my style was ham-fisted, random, and crude, but by paying attention and building each small improvement to my slayer, I was able to transform that style into something deliberate, methodical, and although still endlessly chaotic, efficient. It felt like going from banging my fists on a piano to finally putting my fingers on the right keys to produce something that resembled music. A little butthurt, a little bottom befuddled, a little posterior pulverized that my playtest ended just as I was getting in this rhythm, but I did capture some cinematics of the story before I left, which I'll summarize as- Don't do this shit, man. It ain't worth it. If you continue, you will bring down the heaven's wrath. Saving your people will not bring you peace. Only make the burden you carry worse. And although the Doom Slayer doesn't respond verbally, Actions speak louder than words.
about it. That is the best that I can squeeze out of one hour of gameplay. Shout out to Sean over at Bethesda for hooking up the early access. Hugo Martin for tech support. That's right. The creative director came over and helped me with my game when it wasn't loading in correctly for like 20 minutes. It was hilarious. So man, Hugo Martin, real ass gamer. All right, real ass gamer. He's not some executive up in his ivory tower. Look at all the responsibility that I have. He is a genuine class act. It's software and Bethesda, all these signatures on this thing really mean a lot to me. I've never gotten one of these before, so I appreciate you giving me my very first poster. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this. I imagine it's indestructible, so I might just use it as a doorstop. And with that being said, I'd like to thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end of the video. Doom comes out on March 20th, 2020, so you're gonna have to wait. Congratulations to Potato God for getting an A-plus on his project where he interviewed me, and be sure to tune in next time when we argue if anger is a reliable source of energy.